Welcome back. And now we are, uh, having finished the eyes, we're going to start working on the uh, rest of the skin, trying to blend those shadows, which I uh, earlier sketched on, uh, back in the mid-tone. And I'll probably take this in several stages. Um, normally I'll work uh, from the shadows to the mid-tone, might take a break at that point, and then come back and continue on to do the highlights. Uh, so I might do those as, as two separate videos, just to uh, protect a bit. And then, uh, finally, we'll come back and do details, we'll do the lips, we'll do uh, some glazes, uh, definitely color variation. Uh, there's, still a, there's still a bit of a ways to go. Uh, but in the end, uh, the mix I'm using uh, is the same uh, that I did on this guy. Oh, sorry. Um, so, you know, we're going for a, a skin tone similar uh, to what he has, and, you know, maybe, maybe not quite as much contrast, uh, a big, big string uh, there, but yeah, something something along these lines is, is where we're headed to. Alright, so I have mixed up my uh, base coat, uh, or my, well, my, my mid-tone, really not the base coat, uh, mid-tone, and the shadow tone on my palette, and a little bit darker shadow as well. Uh, so again, the, the mid-tone is going to be a 50-50 mix of Reaper's uh, bronze shadow and rosy shadow. Uh, once maybe not quite as pink as this and not quite as tan as that. Uh, so we're going to the middle. Uh, the shadow is a 50 50 mix of basic dirt and uh, chestnut brown. Again, just for brown, but a bit of a reddish brown. Um, and then into that is some of the mid tone mixed as well, so it's not just pure brown. And then I add just a touch of this uh, walnut brown for some darker shadows. Uh, and again, you know, kind of focus on where do we want to place those shadows. I've already got the sketches in here. Uh, so we'll start working. And I like to work from dark to light. So I'm going to come in here uh, a little bit of that darker tone. Uh, and kind of increase the shadow right there in that deepest part of the cheek. Uh, it's a nice sharp shape there. A little more in there. And the other side, not quite as much, uh, but still, you know, just a little bit in there to bring that out. And again, I can go in with some glazes and, and uh, strip and some shadows later on if I need to, but I like to try and get as close as I can early on. And then let's darken up underneath the chin. This is obviously an area where. Not much light is going to be hitting. I want to try and get that nice and dark. Um, you know, and here I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go for a decent level of contrast. Um, one comment you'll hear is as you go up to larger scale figures, you don't need as much contrast. And in the theory, I agree. Um, but I think it's taken a bit too far. I mean, obviously, as a one-to-one a -one figure, you don't really need the contrast uh, for the shadows. But, you know, going from 28 to 54 to 75 millimeters, you know, it, it's not, you know, you're still well, well away from one-to-one -one scale. So I don't think you really need to dial back that contrast uh, too much uh, when you're going uh, from these sort of scales. shadow with my regular shadow tones to start to layer in and smooth out those regions. Um, and again, my paint plus a bit of water, I don't have a set mix, it's just kind of by feel. Um, how does the layer look? How is it How is it covering up the layer beneath it? How opaque or transparent am I getting? On the face, the face is always going to be a focus area, uh, focal point of the figure. So you want to take extra time, uh, take a little more intermediate steps. Um, 
than you would on you know other areas of the figure. The, the shadow under the chin is going to be probably more abrupt. You get that sharper line there at the jaw, so it's not it's to too smoothed out. But I still want to get those edges a little bit. In advance, let me just say this is going to be a slow process. I'm not the fastest painter, but I don't really care. Uh, I'm not doing this for speed. I, I enjoy the process. I find it relaxing, especially when it goes well. But I'm not trying to be the fastest one out there. Uh, my approach is more layering, which is certainly a slower approach than, say, wet blending or loaded brush and other, te other techniques, so uh, this will not be the quickest video from start to finish. So you may just want to jump around once you get the idea. Uh, and especially since we're trying to do a decent amount of contrast here, you need to take time going from color to color to build those smooth transitions. The nice thing is since I have sketched in the shadows, um, I don't really need to work over everything. These colors, I'm really just working in those shadow regions, trying to blend in that edge. Um, and I do a bit of overlap because obviously the layers aren't entirely opaque. There's some transparency there. But I don't need to go everywhere with these darker colors. I just need to go in the spots that I have darker shadows. Helps me from overloading those highlight regions where you just you know, build layer upon layer upon layer as you're going to those top highlights. Um, now in terms of the shadows, I like to have some variation there. We don't necessarily have every shadow be as dark as every other shadow. Uh, you know, the, the major features tend to have bigger shadows. The major shapes tend to have bigger shadows. Um, but you can see here with the different colors, I'm really focused on deeper parts of the cheeks, under the brows, and under the chin. Uh, there are kind of finer features around the mouth, around the nose, uh, and those I'll get to whenever I get the shadows closer to my mid-tone uh, and it's not quite as extreme because I don't want those to be um, super dark. for the nostrils earlier on. Out of the lines just slightly. A little bit clean up there. All right, so we're back to uh, the shadows one I began with for the sketch. And now I'm going to gradually mix in more and more of my mid-tone, that 50-50 mix of the bronze shadow and rosy shadow into that brown mix. Just slowly work up. I mean, I notice I'm using, as I'm saying mid-tone and then I'm saying the, the shadow paints. Um, you know, that's, those are Reaper's names. Reaper calls those the skin shadows. Um, in my opinion, uh, a lot of those, a lot of those colors, those, those triads, uh, you know, they, they have these uh, three-color triads where you've got a mid-tone, a shadow tone, and a highlight. Um, in my opinion, a lot of those aren't all that extreme in their range. Uh, you know, the, the darkest color, the lightest color, isn't quite as far as I want. Uh, now, for you know, tabletop, for 
that thing on it you know, it's going to be absolutely fine. Uh, but for display, I like a higher contrast look. Uh, and so I supplement those those tones. As I see, I show more of my mid-tone, and then I've gone in and taken some of those darker browns um, to give my you know, give me deeper and deeper shadows. Uh, and you'll notice I also like to mix and match between the sets. Um, you know, the skin tones are, I think, some really nice colors, uh, but I think you can get even better results if you play around with them. You got a lot of sets, there are a lot of options. And so here, you know, I'm working with a mix of bronze skins, the rosy skins, and later on I even highlights the, uh, the fair skins. And there's the olive skin tones, dark skin, uh, tan skin, uh, you know, a variety of, of, of colors. And, you know, when it comes to skin, there's a lot of different variations in there, even just in, you know, Caucasian skin. A lot of variations from from one person to the next. Not to mention then other ethnicities. Um, so you know you can play around with those different shades. Um, you know there's not really a there's not exactly a right or a wrong um, when it comes to skin tone. Um, you've got quite a bit of freedom there. So you play around, see what mixes you like. Um, this is a little bit more of a outdoorsy skin tone than I'm working on here. Um, I also like to paint with just the, uh, the rosy skin and the fair skin mix. Uh, so what I have here for the, the bronze skin, I just leave out. And that gives you a, a, a fairer, you know, lighter skin tone, uh, which can be nice for, for females, for elves, for more Northern European uh, style of skin. The nice thing also with that lighter skin tone is when we finally get to the, uh, the glazing stage, Intermediate mix here of the shadow midtone. Uh, when we get to that glazing stage, uh, the glazes are going to pop more on those lighter, lighter colors. So you know, it took a little bit longer to build up the colors here with glazes because it's a bit of a darker skin tone. Uh, I don't want to forget the neck, so I'm going to come down to here. Uh, you know, the neck is not going to have big shadows, uh, at least not you know, below the jaw. So I've you know, been a bit lighter at this stage. I'll try to get into that crevice between the, uh, the neck and the clothing. And I'm starting to get a bit lighter here in terms of the shadows. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to slowly begin to work into the other shadow areas. Um, might go another layer up before I do that, but we're we're getting close. Yeah, here I can start laying this down. Mm -hmm. Let's start here. Uh, and you can see, you know, that color. The effect it has right here, uh, you know, this is it's semi transparent, so it's over a lighter color, so it's not as strong, whereas this still remains dark because uh, I'm working over darker, darker shadows to begin with. But yeah, I can start lining uh, that line, running down the, the cheeks towards the mouth uh, as I go. Here, just blending in that line along the outside of the cheek. Um, and again, the sides of the face are areas where I tend to have more shadow. Um, you know, again, the, the light's coming from more directionally in front of the face. Uh, so even though those side surfaces can be, um, you know, not necessarily angled down, but we can still uh, have some shadows there. Uh, you know, nothing extreme, but some, some minor shadows there on the temples. Look nice. Alright, get in there under the brow. Um, now, the brow, again, kind of the lighter shadow I'm going to have going on the outer edge. As you get closer to the, uh, the nose, it's going to remain rather dark. 
another area where I want to have some intermediate shadows is under that lower eyelid. Uh, just really get that shape in. Uh, but obviously it's not going to be quite as extreme as uh, other regions. Alright, let's run down the side of the nose. And kind of around the nostril. I'm going to go over a lot of that. Just to get in there. I can be sloppy here. That's because I'm going to be working up and uh, putting a lot of highlights in that region. Bring the brow out. We can take that shadow sides of the head and temples. Sorry, it's hard to paint and keep this thing centered. cheeks. Um, now one thing to notice is uh, not just where I'm applying the paint, but also uh, how the, the brush is moving. Um, you know, the paint, I sort of want to pull the color uh, in the direction that I'm, that I'm working. So uh, darkest shadow is right here in the innermost part of the cheek, so I'm going to pull the lighter shades away from that region, uh, which helps with the, uh, the blending. Same thing under the chin, uh, you know, pull it up along the sides of the face, sort of start in that transition region and work up. All right, like I said, starting to put in some of those other other regions. So now we're underneath the uh, lip, lower lip. And we got those little shapes on the side of the mouth. Uh, start laying some darker tones in uh, to work on. Intermediate mix. Go up a bit lighter. And you can see, get a quick look at that. So here was the original shadow color, and then mix one, mix two, and now here's my next mix, and I'm working all the way up to here. So it, you know, it's still got a ways to go. But you also notice that I'll leave those other shades in here because I may need to go back. I may you know, go a little too far with something and want to jump back to a earlier color uh, to help smooth that transition. So I, I leave those around for later use. All right. And ribbon on the cheek there. side of the face. Um, you know, some of these lines, again, kind of think about using your shadows uh, to direct the eye, to, to sort of bring out what you want the viewer to see, uh, you know, what should be an area of focus, what should be subtler, um, and, you know, that relates to uh, expression as well as just those major shapes. You know, this character, his mouth is reasonably neutral. He's got a little bit of a, of a smirk uh, in his face. So the lines around the cheeks aren't going to be super strong. You know, if he had a, a, a big smile or he was, you know, yelling, um, you know, those, those lines around the, uh, the cheeks and the mouth are going to be more exaggerated. If he's got a very neutral expression, they'll be quite subtle. You know, just you go to a mirror and take a look. You know, make some faces, see what lines show up, what lines don't, and keep that in mind, you know, as you're shading your figure. Um, you know, there may still be a feature there, but if it's not a you know, major part of the expression, uh, you don't necessarily need to have a super strong shadow. So if I'm in a really dark line uh, on those cheeks, it would look 
a little god. It just wouldn't quite make sense with the uh, expression of the character. And I tend to kind of work my way around the figure. Start on the, his right. It's a little easier angle to work at. And have a little bit of a line here between the, the brow and the nose. But again, that's... that's a subtle shape. He doesn't have a real furrowed brow, so you don't just like have a real dark, dark line there. But we're at you know, kind of an intermediate shadow tone, so I'll start laying that down there, so you get a bit of a border, a bit of a variation. Um, and that's probably a feature that I'll bring out more with highlighting than with the shadows. And you can think of the the shadows give the figure volume. weight, and the highlights help refine those shapes. So as I start doing the really subtle features on the face, those subtle shapes, uh, probably rely more on, more on highlights to bring them out, and I will on the shadows. The lips are also an area that I'll address later. Do a slight different mix for the lips, so I don't worry as much about uh, the color on there right at this stage. I feel like I'm kind of forgetting the neck on some of these layers. sharp line there between the bottom of the, uh, the chin, or the, where the chin meets the neck. So I might go in with one of those earlier shadow tones and just soften that out slightly. Uh, again, it should be a, a rather strong transition there, but it just, it's just a little too strong. That's why I've got those other colors mixed in. I can jump around as needed. Just hope those transitions were uh, not quite happy with them. All right, next, next stage. I'll put a little bit of water as I go. Some evaporates from the palette. I just want to keep the, that same level of transparency. And especially in a region like the face, 
you know, it's, it's worth getting it right. You know, going back. Don't don't worry about you know getting it perfect on your first pass. Uh, you know, often I will you know, paint paint the face on a figure and then come back to it. And, you know, there might be some spot that I'm like, oh, just the transition doesn't quite work, or that shadow is the you know, or that shadow or highlights just the wrong level. It's not quite right. So, you know, let's get, go back, remix, and make some adjustments. You don't have to repaint the entire face, just the, the region you're not quite satisfied with. Uh, but again, you know, the face is such a major focal point. It's worth getting it right. Uh, so, for example, I can already see right here. Let's get this water on the brush. Um, there's a bit of a transition here between the uh, deeper shadow and the lighter parts of the cheek. It's just it's, it's too strong. I can already see that, so I can you know, just jump right back. I've got some of the colors already mixed, and just soften that out. Work those intermediate shades. Smooth that transition. And if I missed it until the end, I, you know, that's an area that I'll fix. Go back in. Shoots are always such a hard region to, to shade, I feel like. Because uh, you've got, you know, the top of the cheek is going to be obviously a highlight. But your shadow tends to fall you know, on this intermediate part of the cheek, you know, kind of right there in the middle, a little bit more triangular. And as you go down to the chin, uh, it gets a bit lighter again. It's not going to be real light here, but it's, it's not quite as dark as, as that region. So it's, it's, it's a, there's some subtleties there, and, and you have different directions for transitions, and it can be a, definitely it's a challenge. And then, like I said, one of those regions where you know, after I'm done with the figure, I'll go back and reevaluate how does that look. And if I'm not happy with it, repaint it. Sometimes you lose these finer features as you're going. Um, so I'm already taking a look here at like the side of the mouth. Um, you know, I want that line over here to be a bit stronger. That's becoming with these shadows. And I feel like it should be a bit darker. So let's go in and add a little bit more shadow there. stages and blend that back out. But like I said, some things you notice while you go and some things you really just don't see till afterwards and you've had a chance to look at the full piece reevaluate. But you also notice, you know, as I'm working, uh, you know, the region I'm working is slowly migrating. It's moving away from those shadows more towards those intermediate areas. And 
the end, got the other cheek. Darker shadow there, and then lighter beneath it, lighter above. And really beneath it, kind of on the side of that side of the jaw, I'm, I'm probably going more towards the, the mid-tone, and then I'm going to stop, whereas above the cheek is where I really put in the, the highlights. One thing that can be challenging on faces, especially figures with helmets, is you know, what do you do about those you know, helmet, a hat? Um, how do you work that into your, your shadow and highlight placement? Yeah, for the most part, you know, you, you, you have a mix of realism and artistic freedom. Um, you know, it's still it's still a work of art. You want people to take a look at it. And you, your face is all in shadow. It's not really going to be the same effect visually than if you've got those those lights. Um, so, you know, in this figure, this helmet doesn't have any sort of brim, uh, so it's going to have minimal effect. Still, I probably won't take the highlights right up to the edge. I might keep them down a little bit lower and just acknowledge that there is some overhang. Uh, and if there's a larger brim, you know, I might leave the forehead out of the highlights and just highlight the nose and the, the cheeks and so on. So something you, you, you know, we, we address, we take note of, uh, but don't let that dictate the entire approach to painting the figures still want a nice looking end result. The other cheek. Yeah, transition needs a little bit of work. Always a tough region. Always a tough region. Next. Next mix. And I think we're about one step away from the, the mid-tone of this point. Just about there. Get a little water and dry out a bit too much. As we go towards the highlight, I'm going to start really focusing on just certain regions. Uh, obviously above the uh, tops of the cheeks. On the nose is another region. Top of the nose, forehead, chin, and the mouth. But say here on the jaw, I'm just going to put a tiny little dab right there um, and really take that mid-tone as more of a, of a highlight for that region. Again, it's just relative to the colors around it. Won't be nearly as bright as elsewhere on the face. As I mentioned, you know, we're looking at more light coming down towards the figure uh, from the from the front. So those sides can be more in shadow. So the darker there isn't bad. Get the 
chin. shades. Too big a transition there. We'll go into that deeper shadow on the cheek a bit slower. So just fixing that rig. That's what we're probably hard to see on the camera. Um, all right, so what I want to do is I want to put a little more of a shadow, um, kind of the shape around the side of the mouth. I want to put a little shadow back behind it. So it kind of goes lighter, darker, and then lighter again on the side of the, the chin. few steps, come in with one of the more intermediate shadow tones, just a little more definition there. You see that, a little bit more of a line, right there. And I gotta blend it back in. colors still along the palette. Alright, a little diversion. Slides. cheeks. Side of the nose. And just a little bit on the neck. Uh, again, the neck's going to be a lot darker than uh, I think a lot of light down there. Really. Top of the face is blocking it. So the mid tone is going to be more of a highlight in that region. Probably coming with just a little bit of highlight in there, but, but not much at all. All right, and let's go back to our mid tone. On the face, just a tiny, tiny bit there. It's a little bit of a highlight. Not, you know, it's a bit exaggerated on the camera, uh, but you can see, you know, again, those shadows just define those those shapes nicely. Those temples mainly untouched. 
just kind of come around the front of the forehead. They get these subtle shadows in the temple, it's nothing too, too major. Go that upper lip. Chin. The nose coming down the sides. And like the temples, get a bit of shadow on the uh, side of the nose there. Just subtle, nothing too, too extreme. And the other side of the face. And I think you have noticed I've largely ignored the bottom eyelid. Got a little bit of shadow underneath it. Um, but top of the lower eyelid, I'll just be doing with uh, the highlight color, so I don't need to hit it repeatedly with these uh, shadow tones. All right. I think that is more or less of a stage I'm happy with. Ever so slightly. Maybe a little bit lighter on the chin over here. And I can decide is there anything that I feel still needs some work? line down the side of the face here. They want it to be a little bit more pronounced than it is. Uh, so I'm going to jump back to a intermediate shadow tone and just come in there. Get that line a little bit more in there. And jump around. Smooth out the edges of that. All right, I think that is a good point to take a break. Uh, so I worked from the shadow colors from that really early sketch back up to the midtone. Let's try and get a little closer look at this. Let's 
you can see, you know, the main shadows are underneath the cheeks, under the brows, obviously under the chin is, is nice and dark. You know, the front of the face is, is more lit. You know, there's not the big shadows there. Um, you know, I might tweak the, the line next to the side of the mouth a little bit. You know, that's a little, a little wonky, so I'll, I'll fix that a bit. Uh, look at the other side. Uh, again, you know, that shadow underneath the cheek looks nice. Uh, and obviously underneath the brows are, are dark. So, you know, it, it gives the shape, the, the face, uh, some volume sense of weight to it uh, but the next step which is going in with those highlights uh, when we're really going to get uh, some of the nice features in there and really uh, help bring out the, the shape of the face let's do a quick quick adjustment there and obviously the lips a bit when I come back and, and do the details there I can adjust that slightly. So, all right, well, I'm going to take a break, and uh, the next video, we will come in and work on the highlights.